Hello and welcome to Zelda Speedruns 2. Today we have another Ocarina of Time match. It is a no item manipulation wrong warp match between um, TKC, number 13 seed, and Rosewater, the number Even 5 seed. Even if they seed. did, like. Uh, and. The. There's people that do like rando and put speed run anyway, so it's like, who okay. really cares? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Hello. It's, it's fine. Hi. And Good today evening. I have with me Good evening. Greg and Cruxer, and I will hand it off to you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So this should be a really cool race. These guys are they're about two minutes apart in time, but uh, this, perfect, this is both really good runners, both one of those tricks that, like, playing really well recently. Yeah, so it should be sure. a really good match. Yeah, definitely. TKC is someone who hasn't done a lot of runs recently, but actually PB today. Got a 117 today. Yeah, nice uh, healthy 32 second PB. And <laughs> Rosewater is somebody who has sort of a mid-116, so a bit of a better time, but hasn't been playing so much recently. So actually, this race has the potential to be yet another nail-biting close one. That was too far to the left. Yeah, it's also very exciting because this is a N64 really versus like VC really race, which are always fun to watch. So Rosewater yeah. is on so N64 that... and TKC is on VC. And so the routes they differ slightly uh, for the most part, but I'm about to throw them up again. And that's always a good, a good fun to see who's ahead, who's behind, and where they stand. And of course, N64 loses quite a bit of time to lag in the end game, so VC always has a chance to catch up. So we are, unfortunately, waiting for Rosewater to realize <laughs> the race, but we'll get there. Uh, you know, we'll just have to keep you company. Yeah, do our best to keep you entertained while I yell at Rose to stop practicing. Yeah. But no, like Greg said, this, this will be a really interesting one. VC to N64 matchups are always fantastic. I think just it showcases the category in the best way. And gives us you know, a lot of opportunity to talk about things, explain it, um, why the differences are there, what they are. So, you know, it's going to be good. All right, I, I got the rose to stop practicing. I think he's just going to set up his actual game now. Yeah, luckily with N64, you can just pull a cartridge out, pop a new one in, and you're good to go. Easy peasy. None of this Wii menu shenanigans. Yeah. I just realized for the first time today, like, in like space of like two years, I need to turn my batteries in my Wiimote. I, I, I already just noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, countdown's we happening. We're about happening. to have a race on our hands. Let's go. So the first few minutes, as in, as with every Ocarina of Time race, are kind of nothing really going on. It's just the intro. So we've got three minutes to get through first, but then once we get past that, we'll be uh, we'll be off to the races. Not entirely sure what's just happened. There we go. <laughs> there we go. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit, a little bit of a delay between the um, Rose oh, sorry, Rosewater this. starting himself up a little early there. Yeah. So but people Germany always has talk. Oh, my yeah. apologies, Greg. People always talk about the uh, the difference, even in lag between N64 and VC. It's a big talking point for this category. We've had races decided on it recently, um, but it stacks up from the second you go. Even in the intro here, uh, N64 is leaving. You know, four seconds behind out of the first sort of two minutes and fifty seconds that you you don't have control. So it's pretty. It's pretty incredible, actually. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous how much time you lose, how much time they lose, like in a short space of time. And it's it's pretty like iffy for the most part throughout the run. Like, there's not too many bad points, and it's not until the end game where things really pick up.
So ideally, uh, if in a child section, it should be an advantage uh, to 264 because they get, can get bomb shoes faster and generally do take advantage of some 1.0 tricks that PC can't do to uh, get a bit of an advantage on. They should be leaving child section about a minute ahead, roughly. Yeah, absolutely. So I think a generally decent VC Master Sword time would probably be considered at low 18 minutes. The very fastest mm-hmm. come come at under 18 minutes. Similarly, with N64, you're looking at probably under 17 and a half is decent, and the very fastest coming in at like extremely high, sort of 16 minutes. So yeah, looking at about 45 seconds to a minute's difference. Um, and it'll be interesting here, uh, especially in a race, there's so many things in child section that can go ever so slightly wrong that will decide, you know, how far behind you actually leave child section. There's quite a multitude of tricks that can uh, cause problems, and of course, some RNG as well. Yeah, generally, uh, SSC4 is a much harder child section because there's not many backups for what they do. At least, like, I'm, I'm much I'm less safe. Yeah, child section. I mean, there's backups. It's the safety that's the problem. Um, yeah, you know, you can't. You don't have the same safety that a shield basically gives you. Uh, yeah, like it's amazing what sword and shield can do for you. Yeah, particularly when it comes to something like a damage boost and yeah. backups to that. So. Yeah, so the, the damage boost to the, the uh, crawl space in the courtyard is going to be the real choke point for 64. Yeah, absolutely. If they, if they get past that, then the child section is basically over for them. Yeah. So it's, here, the... here at the start, you're even going to see differences, um, like we just mentioned. BC is the only one, uh, the only route that gets the sword and shield here. Uh, N64 will skip that in favor of a couple sticks and some Deku nuts. Uh, so you will see N64, in theory, gain the lead basically from the off. Um, and, you know, the way some tricks are done here will sort of diverge the two routes almost immediately. So, yeah. And it's based on. Interesting. And based on Rose's rupee round here, it looks like he's going to be going for walking while talking escape instead of yes, going uh, for the, the big boy play of West I escape. think he is, which in a race is understandable. Consistency yeah. over speed is always good. Exactly. I know that uh, players like Valiant favor getting two sticks and going for West anyway. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's not a trick. It's not an easy trick to pull off, especially in a race scene. Yeah, and if you so, stand it, there's no backup to it, so might as well yeah, absolutely. pick your losses and go for walking while talking. Play it safe. Walking while talking is super consistent, but nothing is as consistent as good old uh, Pokey Escape uh, yeah. for VC. Sword and Shield Escape is, you know, it's it's that it's the trick everyone learns. It's very simple, straightforward to do. Yeah, uh, and you will always get yourself out of the forest without any real issues. So we can see yeah. Rose going for walking while talking here. Yeah, um, the, the real danger of walking while talking is that he can't. If he grabs any ledges by accident, then he'll lose his map, which is the only way he has to navigate. And Valiant, actually, during Valiant's race with Crux, uh, that week, Valiant actually lost his map and had to navigate blindly to get out of the forest. <laughs> it's quite, so quite spectacular. Yeah, incredible that he managed, actually. TKC yeah. here going for West Escape. Ooh, fails it. Fortunately, jump slashes, so we'll do standard Pokey Escape here. Yeah. Clips through. Yeah, very nice. And he's out of there. It's funny, like Pokey Escape, such a like a, an old trick, a very like an old classic trick, but people, even like experienced runners, fail it constantly from time to time. It's one of those tricks that like occasionally you'll just mess up and you you'll lose ribbon for it entirely, and it's impossible to get back. For, like, yeah, a while. it's actually it's it's simple in theory, but quite precise in practice. So it is easy yeah. to uh, to screw up a little bit. But luckily, there's like a like loads of subs for it, so you can always pick one that suits your fancy. I've seen people do like ESS setups, C up setups, uh, just slash and go setups. It's, it's actually ridiculous how free form that trick can be sometimes. Yeah, and even myself, I know I've switched between multiple methods. Um, you know, I've I've come full circle from doing a slash setup back to you know a shield turn setup to an ESS setup back to a slash setup. Just whatever works for you in the moment. But the advantage of that escape is how many options you have to set the trick up. Yeah, it's a very, very nice uh, backup for the West Escape if you have to fail it. All right, I can't imagine TKC is going to be uh, <laughs> going to be big, big dick and go for the South Skip. No, I don't think so. <laughs> no so way. <laughs> VC with the sword can do slash ESS, which 
is a form of basically super sliding at very very slow speed from the recoil of a sword slash um and it lets you skip past this owl without interacting he oh, is actually going for, going it. for what the it. hell incredible okay fails it first time oh he fails okay. it okay so that's not terrible he's not passed too much time a day the real risk of that strat is if you start the slide and halfway into the trigger you drop ess the owl will talk to you and at that point you've wasted so much time of day that you're going to lose a couple minutes waiting later on because of how this route works and having to get to the castle before it turns to night basically yeah we see rosehead doing a, a pretty similar trick to what dixie was trying to do which is a forward uh, forward west works on super slide we slide up into the water and hold keeps that momentum going and because he's in that state dow can't talk to him and so he just goes right past into kakariko it doesn't save that much time but it passes time of day more and so that's what the real goal is right now to pass time TKC of day. failing the second west Ooh. this is going to make his time of day tight you lose about seven seconds here in total time but the punishment is as the owl flies away, a time of day continues to pass and you can do nothing about it. Rosewater nicely getting uh, Coco Dive with Nuts. So he is into bottom of the well. And we'll see the first N64 1.0 exclusive glitch right here. Yes, yeah, blank, no, blank A. So he's going to be uh, entering this crawl space and then throwing a nut to interrupt it. And so the game thinks it's in the crawl space and it uh, changes some of the properties of the game world and Link himself, or just that, he can just walk in midair and make some of the collision really funky, like this scotch isn't going to hit him at all. And you can use this to just jump slash out of bounds and side hop in midair to get down to the basement, which is unloaded, but this water is still there. And so you can use this water to just swim up and out of bounds, get into this area where the bomb chew chest is. Yeah, it's kind of wacky. So the water, those of you that are familiar with Bottom of the Well, there's little bits of water that sort of run down, uh, almost drains in Bottom of the Well. And that water actually extends infinitely downwards. And so that is what we swim in when we do that out of bounds. Um, this is just lucky that it's programmed that way. Yeah. Well, Unfortunately, the... VC can't do blank A. So yeah. we're going to see TKC go for Ocarina Dive instead, uh, which yeah. is going to lose a lot of time compared to N64, but isn't too hard a trick. Yeah, it's amazing how forgiven this trick actually is sometimes. Like it, it's pretty precise, but the angle you you can you can get with this is actually kind of ridiculous. And there's a billion setups to get this angle, from like ESS to side rolls, so something like TKC just did right there. To you can also use invert cam to get visual cue, where you can just go over sound cue instead for it. It's actually really forgiving of a trick. So that's TKC again down in this unloaded basement, making his way to where we saw Rosewater land in the water, uh, yeah. and he will do the same sort of swim up to get the bomb juice. Yeah, something interesting about this is that if you drain the water with Zell's Lullaby in the well, then this doesn't work anymore because the water's drained completely. That's right. So you, so you can't swim out of bounds. You get to a certain height and then you just drop. Or you you, you surface. TKC is going to get grabbed by a Wallmaster here um, to void out of the dungeon ever so slightly faster than resetting, thanks to VC's yeah. classic controller text at the start uh... of the reset. Rose must have his health cycle here. He's at one and a half hearts, which means he's got to take a half heart damage somewhere. He is. So he's gonna have to. Unfortunately, either... gonna have to waste a chew. Yeah, he's got to use a chew on Zelda, I guess, when he gets to the yeah. cutscene. So the idea is to enter this area with one heart, because you've got to take half a heart from the, the chew from the damage boost, and then you go use the, the next. Uh, the other half of heart you have is gonna be uh, taken what with the cutscene skip with the other chew. So you would die when you take and get Zelda's alibi. But Rosewater is at one and a half, which means his health cycle is a little bit off. And he also fails Owl Skip. Fails the Owl Skip, unfortunately, yeah. That loses about, what, 10 seconds or so? Uh, seconds yeah, that? somewhere around that. Yeah, if you if you start going for it. Obviously, it doesn't lose any more time than talking to the Owl would normally, but the time of day has passed more while you set the trick up. Yeah. And the result of that is obviously that you're going to get to the crawl space later than you wanted. Yeah, we see Tiki C here doing a little setup to avoid loading this bridge. Because loads the bridge, then he is locked outside for an entire night cycle. But he didn't, and he's good. So he actually did pretty well to salvage that, considering that he failed the first house skip and also failed the West. Yeah, not so bad at all. His, his time of day was really, really scuffed, but he managed to salvage it and get a market in time. I mean, that's the good thing as well, actually, just 
well resorted boost for this damage boost. Keep an yeah, eye on that. It's a scary one. Pausing it for safety. Framely is good. We're yeah, up he's there. Good. Nice. Good stuff. Doesn't go for his usual side hop. I guess scared that he might <laughs> fall off the wall. Yeah, there's always a danger of like, he jumps actually by accident and just recall off the wall. TKC also failing to get the L skip, but yeah. luckily he didn't waste too much time setting it up, so we're all good. Yeah. And what he's doing now, Rosewater is getting past these guards. Uh, if you're not aware, these guards cannot, uh, can be in a state where you are caught, but you cannot actually be caught by them unless you're on the ground for more than one frame. So if you side up frame perfectly, you can avoid getting caught. The rose was to take. Rose playing extra safe. Yeah, yeah. That was very very slow. <laughs> but so much so that he misses the usual cycle on the guard on the right. But yeah, he's through at least, and that's the most important thing in a race. Uh, don't get yeah. caught. That would be my advice. <laughs> getting caught by guards, it was about a minute time loss, roughly. Yeah, my and, first at, at that point. My first race in this tournament, I got caught by guards twice, and it was about a minute oh, and a half yeah. lost. So definitely. Yeah. I can advise not doing that. Yeah, a lot of runs have been reset. Just like a lot of good runs have been reset again. Call back guards. Yeah, for sure. So TKC yeah, every damage go. boost here as well. I assume unbuffered. No, oh, he's buffering it. Frame looks good. Play. He's good. Yeah, easy. That damage boost is easier with sword and shield. Um, it's a bit more lenient. A few more frames that work. Um, yeah. It's also a good backup if you fail it. You, you do a yeah, mega flip. Mega the flip. That's right. It does use another tube, but you know, it, at the cost of keeping your run run alive, it's worth it. TKC also playing it pretty safe with these guards, so I can't blame him. Yeah, I mean it's it's understandable. Not playing quite as safe as Rose, so he might make this little cycle here. Although, yeah. I think nah, at, the, yeah. at this point, at this point, you don't want to risk going to the right side and getting caught. Yeah, what can happen? So usually that right guard, he's far enough away from the hedge that you can actually side hop past him and back walk all the way down. But the other guard at the bottom corner can often be quite fast to move and he will catch you. So you got to be a bit careful and playing it safe here was definitely the right option. Yeah, you gotta try and weigh out what, like how much time has passed since that guy got there and where he's going to be there when you, when you get to the top. Because he, he does turn when you get to the top, then you can just get sniped and caught and that's like right the last second and it's yeah an absolute it's a it's a real gut punch when you get right so close to getting past obviously him. as well you know if you get caught by the first guard you lose maybe 10 to 15 seconds you get caught by the last guard you basically lost a minute at that point yeah so it's, it's really important tough. it's important when you get there you know unless you are total balls to the wall if you're gonna play it safe you might as well play it really safe and just make sure you get to zelda yeah, because this is the last major hurdle of Charles' section. I love dot skip, but that's not uh, too big of a hurdle for these players. No, I don't imagine it will be. No. <laughs> I don't know if we've ever uh, we've seen like a major like dot skip fail in this tournament so far. I feel, uh, like most, I, mean, I feel like most races have been fine. Not that I'm aware of. We've had a couple, you know, like second tries, pause buffers, but no voids as far as I'm aware. Um, yeah. And no sort of minutes lost to to try and get dos skip. <laughs> so this is what I like to call the cutscene gauntlet. Um, once, you <laughs> once you start talking to Zelda, you've got a solid basically 10 minutes of the game where most of what you're doing is cutscenes. Uh, yeah, it's around 7 minutes or so. I roughly make me weigh it up because Zelda's like 2.5 and, and Muscle's yeah. like 4.5 roughly. So. Yeah. And then Master Sword never quite ends. You know, you've got the, <laughs> you've got the initial bit where you see Ganondorf, then you've got the Chamber of Sages, and then you have Sheik after that. Yeah, so Rose taking that extra half heart from Zelda there. Yeah. But what that does mean is later in this route, he is going to be down a chew. <sighs> and that Rose is. Rose Brian set this up yeah. here. Should be good. Yeah. So he's going to walk into this cutscene kit by the bomb chew, and then yeah, echo the cutscene, and skip the cutscene. Look at Zelda's lullaby. So what's happening yeah. there is uh, Rosewater is dying. Basically on the same frame that the cutscene would normally trigger, and the death overrides the remainder of the cutscene playing. But in this game, when you enter the Zelda's Lullaby cutscene, uh, you learn it on the very first frame of that cutscene starting, before you've actually played the song on the ocarina. Uh, and so he can leave, uh, and he's got the song in his inventory. CL is, an, is a, an important song for most runs. In this run, it's only real uses to get magic. 
Uh, or if yeah. you spell Spirit Hover to get a key in Spirit Temple. Yeah. But of course, magic leads to the ability to shoot light arrows, and that is really what we need it for. Um, yeah. It's all it's all a path to something. TKC is going to do a slightly different version of that skip here, because he has Sword and Shield. So he's just going to backflip, explode the chew in the air, and be pushed in to the cutscene by the explosion. Much yeah, easier a... method, much more lenient. Uh, yeah. Very low risk of failure compared to N64. Yeah, the only, the only way you can really fail that is if you drop the chew too early. Then you, you take damage. You, right. you, you, yeah. you take damage, but you also enter the cutscene, so you don't actually skip it. Rosewater going to be doing swordless dot skip here, which. Ooh. Okay, it's fine. Is a bit more tricky than. A VC Ooh, do, and well, voiding. Spe speaking of speaking of dot skip fails, holding uh, left too late, I think. Yeah, maybe. That's unfortunate, Greg. I'm blaming you for that one. What, dude? Come on. <laughs> Wake up, so, balls. TKC given an opportunity to catch up completely for free. That looks good. Yeah, yeah. there we go. He's he's for good. Okay. So dot skip is a little bit more awkward, but then so dot skip is is. Probably easier than Swordless, but Swordless is also not too tricky. Once you get the, uh, once you understand how it works, not that bad. It's likely about 20 seconds lost for Rosewater there. Nothing yeah. terrible. Yeah. So you'll see a slightly different uh, dot skip here from TKC. Buffer in it, plant safe. Got the right frame. Yeah. So the way, the difference there uh, with Sword and Shield, you can. Uh, Obviously, jump slash back in bounds. Um, the way Swordless has to do it is they have to get out of bounds, and when Link touches the floor again, they have to manipulate it so he stays kind of bouncing on the floor. Uh, whereas on VC or with Sword and Shield, um, you can go completely out of bounds and then just jump slash straight back to the right position in the door and go from there. But both players get into Master Swords relatively cleanly. Um, low 18 for Rosewater. High 18 for TKC. Not too bad at all for a race. Yeah, TKC is only 20 seconds behind his, uh, his PB right now, which is not bad for a race, honestly. Okay, Rose is confirming that it's just a weird angle. I did notice when he did his first side roll, he didn't. He targeted a bit too early, so Link was off off center. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And if he, you stay off angle there, that can happen, so. Bit unfortunate, but. Not, not, yeah, not, not too big of a deal. N64 has a big advantage in the early game, so... See if we can carry it through. I am, I'm curious to see if Rosewater goes for the uh, DC hover. So he's, he's down the uh, chew, so I don't think he will. He but... won't, because he's down a chew. Yeah, and, like, uh, he, he's he, gonna he run out. He could skip a Hess in Kakariko, but probably not worth yeah, it. Yeah, I... I don't think he would, even if he had to choose. I think this race is a little bit too important. For him, even the meme lord he is, <laughs> might be a little bit too important for him to mess around with that. So I think we're going to see a standard five or six chew spirit hover from him, depending on yeah. how he uses how he uses the chews. He has what? Seven. He will. Have, he'll have finished with seven. Yeah. Okay. So, so if yes. If he skips a hess, obviously he'll still have this, the usual six. Um, I think. Otherwise. No, he'll have, he'll have five. He'll have five. That's right. Otherwise four. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of the advantage of N64 is that you can be... Your your chew count isn't as valuable because you get bombs so early. You can replace a lot of the uh, tricks of explosives. You use your movie chews, but bombs instead. Whereas VC has to be very precious with their chew count because they have 10, they have to make all of them count. So if yeah. you use too many, then suddenly either you can't do Spirit Hover or you have to do a really slow one and also skip other bomb tricks along the way to get there. Yeah. You, need, you need more bombs to, to do it. The biggest difference is obviously uh, we're about to see it. The roots do not stay the same after Master Sword. Uh, N64 is going to head through Kakariko straight to Dodongo's Cavern, where VC is going to go to get Hootshot and do Shadow Temple. And that means that when N64 comes to Shadow Temple later, they have bombs to do some of the tricks with there, uh, which VC doesn't. And it gives them, yeah, just a lot more leniency with explosive, basically. Um, yeah. And also allows N64 to do more, like. Yeah. Hesses and more like, faster tricks, faster movement uh, options around the overworld. Yeah, and I think the general consensus is that the N64, as a result of that, 
is a slightly harder route if you're trying to be optimal, but only because you can throw in sort of so many extra things as well. Yeah, N64 is inferior, about 30 seconds fast if you do every single hard, fast trick, but it's never been timed properly, mostly because it's hard to time differences uh, in terms of like lag and load times. N64 Which I think, it's hard to calculate yeah. that kind of stuff versus the actual time gain they get from having these extra options. And interestingly for this category, I think lag is almost the biggest difference in, in how, in the time for the, the routes, you know, the... I think it comes down to that more than almost anything else. So. Mm -hmm. The favorite in this race is most likely Rose. He is the highest seed and has a better PB, but in a race like this, anything can happen. So there's no, and these are both really good runners. So there's no really way to tell who's favored in this really. Yeah. And TKC has a history of being very, very consistent when it comes to yeah. this sort of thing. Races and uh, just running in general, he's very consistent. Rose is highly skilled but I would say probably has less consistency. So, you know, it could it could come down to, you know, who's maybe taking it the easiest and uh, just makes that one less mistake. Yeah, if Rose has a good has a good day, he'll he'll probably wipe the floor with TKC. But otherwise, I think TKC is probably is going to keep pace pretty well. I feel, I feel like most of the Japanese runners are really consistent as, yeah, a, as a whole. Definitely. It's it's insane. I guess the fact that they're like there's. Currently, in winners is like what well, three Japanese Japanese runners to end it. I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> this is my scouting mission because whoever wins, yeah. whoever wins this match, I will play in round four. So, you know, I don't know, don't really know what I'm hoping for here, to be honest. But, <laughs> I mean, I'm hoping for a good race, of course, but uh, in terms of who I uh, want to succeed, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we see Roy's keeping the house here. He's probably trying to think. Back to some of his bomb chew count. He did lose a chew earlier, so he's probably yeah, thinking that about makes sense. That hair only saves that. maybe 10 yeah. seconds. Yeah, 10, 10 seconds roughly. And also, if he fails, it needs another chew down, but, but wastes time as well, so better to play it safe in the race. And... Let's hope his muscle memory doesn't make him do this one, though, which I have seen happen before. The hair of the sign here. Yeah. This one saves even less time. Yeah, okay, so he, he successfully avoids going for that. And we yeah. see TKC heading for the graveyard. Uh, so this is where we say goodbye to following the same route and hello to the differences that make this category yeah. interesting when we have a race like this. So for the next 15 minutes or so, we're not going to know who's ahead or behind because they're going to be unsynced <laughs> the entire time. We have a rough, rough idea, but like we can't really say for sure until we get out, until we get uh, to the gorilla section. Yeah. Yeah. Just after uh, both save warps out of Shadow for N64 and uh, Minuet for BC. Alright, so Dampo race for TKC, get your bets in now. I'm gonna guess a, a solid 48. Yeah, I think I think a 49. Slightly conservative, but uh, yeah. I've got a little bit of faith. Oh, that was a good dodge. I was very close. And as we expected, Rosewater not going for DC Hover. I think the smart play, of course. Yeah. Alright, TKC bonked and also hit by a flame, so it's looking more like a 50 or anything else right now. Yeah, essentially how the route uh, differences work out is do the same thing, just in different orders. So what Rose is doing right now, TKC will do later, and what TKC is doing now, Rose will do later, and Rose just fell off by accident. Whoops. I think you got a yeah, short that's, there. that's unfortunate. I have had some weird shenanigans go on there before, and uh, sometimes that ledge is a bit funny. Mm -hmm. So TKC gets his hook shot. Very important item. Yeah, and the hookshot almost immediately is going to be used for something relatively wacky. Yeah, something that no one can really explain. <laughs> Known as hookshot jump. Actually discovered by our very own Rosewater. Yeah. At least this use of hookshot jump. Oh, this is a weird box movement. I don't know if I like this or not. I, actually, I don't like it at all. <laughs> 
Yeah, he had a, an angle and he just ruined it entirely. <laughs> so I think I'm a fan of that at all. So what TKC is doing just there, he's interrupted... Effectively, he's sort of lined up some invincibility frames with a bonk and cold hook shot. And it puts Link into this state where he's uh, sort of... It's changing his coordinates between, I think... Well, see, this is why explaining this trick is difficult. But basically, it's changing his coordinates between different types of coordinate values. And uh, it ends up launching him to the sky, ultimately, and uh, putting him on the seam. Yeah, and then on the seam, he can uh, get the infinite sword glitch, which is a glitch you've, have, you've seen before when you did Poke Escape. It basically means that your sword is infinitely swinging. And while in that state, you can't fall off ledges. So it helps navigate that seam, because if you've, it's very easy to fall off of it. And yeah. using that, you can you can side hop uh, into the unloaded area with the Shadow Temple uh, door is, and it doesn't actually load the door itself, so you can just walk around the Shadow Temple. Yeah. So Rose immediately using his bombs, uh, effectively getting a Hess here towards Magic, um, and you know he'll he'll head from here towards Minuet afterwards while TKC finishes out Shadow. Yeah. So uh, the, the big run killers for this in a race in any sort of category is. Uh, coming up very soon, TKC is going to be doing uh, Boat Skip and BK Skip for Shadow Temple. And those are really big run killers, especially most because you haven't got many choose to work with. You want to preserve them as much as possible. Yeah. So you, you could probably see him saving here to preserve his chew count. And then the other big kind of choke point is uh, Spirit Hover later on, in about 20 minutes or so. All right, so boat skip coming up. We're going to see this for the first time here. Uh, Rosewater will be doing this later, but slightly different methods. Um, TKC opting not to save. No, nope, oh, here we go. Never mind. Here, here we go. Just remembered. <laughs> so what he's going to do? He's going to pull a bomb chew once he's got himself into position, playing it safe here and not pulling the bomb chew early. And he's going to perform a mega flip. And once he has this mega flip, which he has here. He'll equip the hover boots and he'll do a ground flip out of bounds and fall into the room that is right before the bongo bongo boss room. But he's got to do a BK skip first. Obviously, he's not picked up the boss key. Uh, so we will see him do a setup here to use an explosive to clip him through the door that exists there. So this trick is somewhat precise. You have a couple of frames to work with, with the, the chew drop and the roll. But this final input we have to target while grabbing the ledge to get a ledge clip off is frame perfect. Yeah, and he if gets it. If he misses it, it's really bad. Good but stuff. he gets it, so. Not too bad. Not yeah, too that bad trick, that, trick, that trick is a lot harder on N64, mainly because buffering is a real pain on N64. Especially in that area. So just PC while, isn't too bad. Just while the bongo cutscene is playing, Rosewater... Uh, is on his way to Minuet, but he is also following uh, a route here that will take a specific amount of damage. Um, he's setting himself up to die as he enters the cutscene. Um, so he yeah. wants to be on half a heart, although he is going to need to take an extra heart of damage, half a heart of damage here. Yeah, he didn't take damage from that bomb for some reason. Because he's spare range, probably. There we go, taking that extra yeah. damage there. And TKC nicely finishing up Bongo. Yeah. Pretty easy boss in this category. You get ISG to stop yourself from being bounced around, and, uh, and you finish him off. Yeah. Rosewater getting a ground jump uh, to skip navigating this maze. And uh, we'll do a very similar thing. Well, basically exactly the same thing he did for the Zelda cutscene earlier. Uh, just using the Moblin here to set up a position for it. Yeah, it's very, uh, very nice. This Moblin is... Position perfectly, you can just stop right in front of him, pull a bomb, and start back walking and into the cutscene and get the get the song ball, so die and skip the cutscene entirely. TKC opting to skip the heart piece. Yeah, that's in, in an all out wild decision. <laughs> wow. Not really a big deal for this category. Ultimately, any of the dangers in this category will kill you in one hit anyway. Um, yeah. The, the only thing is that if he gets trolled by rocks right at the end of this category he will have to die and start again at the end sequence whereas if you have four hearts you get a second chance that is really the only danger here for him yeah 
And I because he skipped that one, I can't see him getting the Dispirit one either because that one's even more time to get. <laughs> Spirit Heart Container is one of the worst ones to get in a in a race because when you saw a run because it takes so long to go the other side of the room and pick it up. That is not worth it at all. Bro is getting a nice little hess across the bridge over to Kakariko. Make a good use of these bombs. You'll see him here looking to, um, I guess it's a graveyard. He's going to farm this grass. Uh, and looking for bomb drops. He wants to get ideally two bomb drops to get to almost full bombs. If he doesn't get uh, enough, he can farm a pot in Dampe's grave, which is, uh, it always has a bomb drop in it. Yeah, he, really wants, he, really, yeah, drop. he really wants to get as many as possible, though, to get all the bomb traits coming up. Fading to quick spin there. Nothing, nothing there, good. unfortunately. He is going to have to grab the pot and Dempe. I Whether or not he'll do it a second time for safety, we'll see. I think he'll probably do it. If we get get this time, and then probably go back to the grass. Yeah. Um, like yeah, a risk. That, that would make the most sense, I think. So TKC is now going to head and do what Rosewater did just before. He's going to go to get bombs. And then he's going to follow that up with magic. And this is where you can see why VC route is tighter on explosives. Um, VC has had to use all chews up to this point. They can't interchange that with bombs at all. Uh, and by the time they get bombs, there's no tricks left to interchange the two with. Uh, so explosive count, particularly bomb chews, becomes quite tight. And uh, there's nowhere to even farm bombs, really, for VC. Uh, like... N64 has it graveyard, so starts to tighten things up a little bit there. Yeah, the um, only place you can really farm bombs for VC is like rocks in Gerudo Valley and then rocks yeah, in Desert and Colossus, and that's about rocks, it. Of course, are 1 in 16 chance, so we want to avoid that as much as possible. Yeah, it's not it's not good at all. So you, you'll see both runners trying to preserve uh, the counter explosives like very, very well, because if they run explosives, then they, it means they're limited on what they can do, kind of tricks they can do. That's true. And not going to lose time as well. I think it matters more for VC than it does for N64, because they have to get more bomb choosing in N64, but it's yep. still a important though. So generally what we would expect uh, out of this is that N64 would be slightly ahead once both uh, runners start heading towards um, Wasteland, uh, Gerudo Valley. Um, but it really depends how Shadow goes for Rosewater here. Um, how close they are at that point. Yeah, Shadow is a bit more scary on S64, because yeah, definitely. Um, even though you have more leniency of the explosives, uh, pause buffering is not good in Shadow at all. On S64, it's really laggy, mm -hmm. and it makes, makes trying to do precise tricks a lot harder. And it's also a, um, a, real, a real choke point for S64 in a big way. Rose going back to the grass, getting a bomb drop. So gets rewarded, gets rewarded for his... Uh, it's persistence, persistence pace. Yeah. Back up. Doing, to, the, doing the same trick that uh, TKC did earlier with his hookshot jump. And this is the advantage for N64 when it comes to explosives. He has 24 explosives, where VC at this point, you know, had eight shoes <laughs> and no bombs. And also heading out of this, he should have still, you know, 17, 18 explosives compared to VC's possible 15 you know, like 15 max yeah well, well 15 bombs and four twos like yeah maximum. yeah by the time you get to spirit hover uh, that number is significantly lower so So I've got this up earlier, but uh, when TKC was in Shadow Temple, he picked up a, a nut drop, uh, which you don't have to get as VC, but uh, you could probably say it come to play a lot later on in Forest Temple. Uh, using nuts in Staphos fights is really, really nice. It makes Staphos fights a lot easier. Yeah, for sure. Something we abuse actually in the glitchless category of this game to full extent. Uh... Yeah. using Deku Nuts, which are absolutely, along with Furore's Wind, the two most powerful items in the game. Oh uh, yeah, for, sure. for most categories, to be honest. Um, obviously, some 
or most would argue that a bottle becomes the most broken yeah. item in this game. But uh, on the category, bottle is yeah the most broken item in the game. All right, so Rose Gang, nice, nice um, buffer, make, a, make a flip there. Big balls. Although on N64, not quite so risky with the number of explosives <laughs> yeah. that you have available to you. And also much nicer, I'm trying to buffer it. <laughs> this is the real tough one here, though, is this boss key skip. Because like I said, buffer on 64 is really awkward. So this trick becomes a lot harder. Okay, second frame for the two drop, second frame for the roll. Now try and buffer this last input. Hard on N64. He, I believe, has... Once you get upwards of about five pauses, that's where it really starts to get worrying. Um, yeah. Because at that point, you are just guessing. You know, you've, you're leaving it longer and longer and longer to try and press that button. And ultimately, it's very easy to skip. Okay, he gets the frame. Yeah, that's always yeah, uh, that's always, that's always scary cool. when AC people do that. And here's one of the advantages, the big advantage of getting bombs early for N64 is this trick here, which, which is one point exclusive. Uh, by dropping a bomb down this hole, you start the bongo fight early. And if you do that, you actually skip the cutscene of the, of the bongo like boss battle intro, which takes about 40 seconds or so. And it means you can just jump, jump down there and stab him to death. And it's a pretty simple fight. Yeah, successfully taking out Bongo with the yeah. uh, power crouch steps right there. So the so that trick alone makes game bombs uh, in 64 like a lot faster because it can yeah, take so advantage of that. that a, while, time a while back, before some time saves were found for uh, VC, it was estimated that that on its own saved around 30 seconds on VC. So uh, compared to VC, so pretty significant. It's less nowadays, but it uh, it was very significant in previous days of this category. Also, I do believe we are in podcast mode just now. We will try to give you as much play-by-play -play as we can. Um, yeah. But we can only apologize. Technical difficulties, unfortunately, are part and parcel of this industry. Yeah, it's a shame, but uh, we'll do what we can to keep you updated. Uh, currently, Rosewater is in a Shamadan and cutscene. He'll be safe warping and and he makes his way to Gerudo Valley very shortly, while TKC is on his way to get Minuet, and then from there, make his way to Gerudo Valley as well. I say at this point, Rosewood is about 30 seconds ahead, roughly. It looks to be about that. 30 seconds to a minute at most. Um, but obviously, from here on out, VC is going to start catching up. Uh, N64 suffers heavily from lag uh, in the last sort of third of this run um and as a result vc is gonna gain back quite a lot of time so tkc gets a ground jump he's uh very surely begin the actually it's such a lot closer than i think it is you know what tkc is potentially going to come out of this a little bit ahead yeah i, I just um, mean how, how much time did the shaman and cutscene took yeah, TKC pulling a bomb and successfully dying as he enters the minuet cutscene. So he has learnt the song. He's going to save and not continue his game. That sends you back to the main menu, which he does successfully. Wow. But as, Ro as Rosewater resets. So we're in a similar situation to what I had in my race against Valiant, where we are heading to Wasteland with VC about five, five seconds ahead here. So... That's a really good position for TKC to be in, because ideally N64 would be ahead uh, right now. So TKC has been playing really consistently, and it's working out for him. Rosewater, a little bit catching up to do, but uh, yeah. he he will have the advantage of a faster Spirit Hover. Uh, he has two more chews to play with, so... He just does he, he, has, has he has one he has more. Four. He has one more in this case, because he, he wastes... He, he has four chews, actually. So it's the oh, same really? amount. Uh, yeah, because he used the oh, chew for he, the... Of course, yep. he doesn't do... Bomb BK skip, my bad. Yeah, he did use a chew for the boss key skip, so he has the same, so they're basically equal, equal on on chew counts right now. Yeah, big difference here being Rosewater has a couple more bombs to play with, so if anything does go wrong, he can back it up for a little bit longer. Yeah, so both players getting the Hess towards Gerudo Valley, very nice. Both getting stuck a little bit on the wall. Rosewater right? getting a little bit stuck on the wall. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, so TKC, stuck on the wall. Hard. 
So yeah. as, as I'm sure you all know from playing this game, when you come to Gerudo Valley, the bridge is broken, and you can either use a Pona to jump over that, or in our case, we're going to use bombs, and we're going to Hess across this bridge by equipping Hover Boots just after getting a Hess. Oof. TKC, unfortunately, holding just outside of ESS position. Yeah. Uh, and is reverting back to the good old Mega Flip strat. Rosewater getting the Hess, however, and takes the lead as a result. Yeah. Um, Paul's from this angle change here. He's a little bit, he wasn't too sure about this angle there. Yeah, successfully gets it though. Um, yeah. So Can't both, blame are, both are heading into the Grudo Fortress cutscene at about the same time. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, water a very slightly ahead. that's a very scary house because you, if you, if you get it but don't, it always likes if you don't, if you drop it like midway through, then you just fall off the bridge. Yeah, it is, it is tricky, different. and backing it up can be hard. There's not a lot of space to work with there, uh, so yeah. I understand why TKC went straight for the mega flip. Actually, I believe even in a run, that is perhaps uh, one of the best options. Yeah, so you see my players here going for the uh, Gerudo gate skip using the ground clip. This is a fairly new method. It, it was found last year sometime, I believe. Sort of mid last year, yeah. Yeah, so almost a year old. Using two bombs to get a staircase hover and then using another one to get a nice uh, ground clip through the gate and just uh, get on through the wasteland. TKC. TKC. Saying fuck that sign. <laughs> <laughs> and is back ahead entering Wasteland. So. Yeah, Rose unfortunately missed out, so he uh, wasted two bombs there because he had two extra bombs anyway, so he was in a good position anyway like this. And then they'll both go for Wasteland Tessa, which is a, a really, really tricky strat. Now, I know Rose Water does full Wasteland, and we will see what TKC does. I believe he will do half, Ooh. and actually drops the Hess, so yes, he, he does the, half, yeah. half Wasteland, and we'll move on from here. Rose Water going for full. Oh, and avoiding. Out. That's unfortunate. So, TKC now takes a commanding lead towards Spirit Hover. Yeah. If Rose can get their second Sorry, wasteland test all the way. I'm going to interrupt, but I'm going to end up cutting the stream because I'm having technical difficulties and Trez is going to take over. Okay. okay. You know what that means? If this fails, blame Trez. Exactly. Okay, going to stop the stream. <laughs> 